So, we all know that only curved surfaces can bend light. Only surfaces that are curved, suppose my light rays are coming like this, it can bend my light like this or if it is going like from this way, it can bend it in this direction. So, curvature is directly proportional to the amount of bending a surface can offer you. These are basic physics, okay, we are clear with those concepts anyway. So, coming to the eye, the power of the eye is a whopping 60 diopters, okay. Plus 60 diopters is the power of the eye. This can be your MCQ. Now, how does this power come from? Where does this power come from? The cornea is contributing the major power with plus 43 diopters of power. That is 70% of the eye's refractive power is given by the cornea. Okay. And the lens gives plus 19 diopters. Now, the sum of this two is greater than 60, but the total power is only 60 because there is some distance between cornea and lens. That distance cancels some power and we end up with a total power of plus 60 diopters to the eye. We all know this basic that plus indicates a convergence and minus indicates a divergence in any given lens. Okay. We have already discussed that the anterior surface of the cornea as well as the posterior surface of cornea together give plus 43 diopters and anterior and posterior surface of the lens together give us plus 19 diopters. Please remember these numbers that is why I am repeating because they are important. Okay. Now the anteroposterior diameter of the lens we are going to refer it as the axial length. And we measure it with a line joining the center of the cornea to the center of the retina. Okay, this is my cornea, sclera. Okay. This is the center of the cornea to the center of the retina. This is my axial length of the eye. Okay, and its measurements normally is about 24 millimeters in adults. However, at birth, it is 16 millimeters. It's a very small eye and hence a small baby's eye is you can understand hypermetropic. That can also be asked in your exam. A newborn's eye is hypermetropic. Okay. And between 18 to 21 years of age, the growth stops from 16 mm it starts growing and the growth stops by the age of 21 years. So that is the age when if there is any refractive error, most commonly it stabilizes at around this age. And this is when we will advise for a person to go for any refractive procedure if at all he wants to. Okay, because the axial length stops growing at this age. Now let us come to the function of the eye that is vision. We are all familiar with this notation of 6 by 6 vision. That is the distance vision normal is 6 by 6. How do we come to this number? Now we all know that the light rays from a source are divergent and as they keep traveling the convergence between them increases and at some point they become parallel to each other. Okay. And this a distance required for divergent rays to become parallel is 6 meters and that is how we arrive at this notation of 6 by 6 vision for normal vision. Okay, please note that as we go closer to an object, the rays become divergent. Okay, please remember this, we will see it further on. However, for now, let's see the normal near vision is N6 and its components are accommodation, convergence and meiosis. All of these three constitute our near vision. Let's see what is accommodation. Accommodation is nothing but the change in the shape of the lens to increase the power of the lens to look at near objects. Now, we have just now seen that light rays from an object A which is near are divergent. And we know that for an image to form, suppose this is our lens, okay, 
the light rays need to converge onto the retina so that the image is formed. However, this object A is very close to the eye. Convergent power of our lens is not enough to uh, focus the rays on the retina. Hence, the lens increases its curvature. Hence, the lens increases its curvature so that it can easily focus these rays on our retina and the image is formed. That's the story of accommodation. Okay, now let's see in detail. The minimum distance we have already seen for light rays to become parallel is 6 meters. So, the nearer the object, the more divergent and distant object rays are parallel. So, the concept that I have explained just now, the increase in the curvature of the lens adds another 16 diopters to the already existing 19 diopters. Okay, so the power of the lens alone becomes 35 diopters and hence the rays become focused onto the retina. Okay, this is accommodation. Now let's look at the mechanism of accommodation. How does the lens change its shape? Now, our hero over here is the ciliary muscle, okay. The ciliary muscle contracts or relaxes depending on whether your eye is seeing a clear image or a blurred image. So, at another point you have to remember is that the action of ciliary muscle is always opposite to that of the zonules, okay. So, that means if my ciliary muscle is relaxed, zonules are stretched. So, when the zonules stretch, the lens also stretches with the zonules and becomes flattened and helps in focusing objects that are far away. Okay, so when the ciliary muscle is relaxed, the zonules stretch. Their action is always opposite to each other and when the zonules are stretched, the lens flattens and focuses distant objects. Conversely, when I am having a blurred vision, my ciliary muscle contracts and my zonules relax. So, when my zonules relax, the lens becomes more rounded. There is no stretch on the lens, so it also relaxes. So, it becomes more rounded and helps in focusing the near objects. That is the principle of near vision and accommodation. So, just to summarize again, the ciliary muscles action controls is controlled by the clarity of our vision. So, when I have a clear vision, my ciliary muscle has nothing to do. So, it relaxes. So, my zonules contract and I can look at a distant object. Similarly, when the eye is having a blurred vision, the ciliary muscle contracts and the zonules relax. Hence, the lens becomes more rounded and I have a clear near vision. Okay. The mnemonic that will help you to remember is CCC, ciliary muscle contracts for close vision. Okay, CCC, ciliary muscle contracts for close vision. Now, the second component of near vision after accommodation is convergence. You can see from this image that convergence means the two eyes come closer together by the action of the medial recti. This is an, a definite component of near vision that is the accommodation reaction. Convergence is the second component of this and meiosis nothing but the constriction of the pupil is the third component of my accommodation or my near vision reflex. Okay, so the triple we call it the triple reaction or the near reaction or the accommodation reaction or reflex. The components of this are the accommodation, convergence and meiosis. All of these together help you read your textbooks. Okay, That's how you will remember this. Now, there are a few uh, important points for your exam that are associated with uh, systemic uh, ophthalmology and are very frequently asked. So, the most common ocular manifestations of a systemic disease are the first and very uh, uh, frequently asked is neurofibromatosis type 1. So, what you are seeing in this picture, the brown colored spots on this uh, gray colored iris are nothing but the Lish nodules and these are pathognomonic of neurofibromatosis type 1. 
However, another bit over here is what is the cause of visual loss in this condition? It's bilateral optic nerve glioma. Bilateral optic nerve glioma causes visual loss in NF type 1. And what happens in neurofibromatosis type 2 is a posterior subcapsular cataract. This is associated with type 2 NF. And Sturge Weber syndrome, you can see in this picture, more commonly associated with glaucoma, particularly if the angioma is present on the upper eyelid. Okay. So, that is Sturge Weber syndrome and von Hippel-Lindau disease is associated with a retinal angioma as you can see in this picture. Now, tuberous sclerosis is another important one and it is associated with a retinal phacoma. Rheumatoid arthritis causes dry eyes. Please remember this. Along with that, even SLE causes dry systemic lupus erythematosus also causes dry eyes. And... Vaginous granulomatosis causes ulcers which are seen over here peripherally in the cornea. So, vaginous causes peripheral corneal ulcers and we have already seen at the beginning of this that thyroid eye disease causes lid retraction which you are going to show it with a one graphy sign and last one the Bechet's disease causes anterior uveitis. So, Bechet's disease causes anterior uveitis. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at Medico App. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.